Hello and welcome to Asgen Tech Forum. How's it going? Great news, folks. So as you can see on my screen, the website blog for SDN Tech Forum is now live. So you can go to your browser, type www.sdntechforum.com and you'll be directed towards to our website. So along with the YouTube channel, all the document what we discussed during the YouTube video, they will be available on the website at the same time. So feel free to check it out. This is still work in progress. So you may not find all the previous videos, uh, website pages here, uh, they are work in progress. All right, coming back to today's agenda. Um, in this video, we are I'm starting a new playlist series, uh, which is dealing with operating system. And, uh, you know, for network, uh, as a network engineer, the most relevant operating system for you is Linux or Unix, right? Because our even our uh, iOS codes or uh, network codes, right? They are also now becoming Linux kernel based. So as a network engineer, it is now along with your programming skill, it is now absolutely mandatory that you know about uh, Linux as an operating system and it's their networking hacks, right? So this is the, that, the with that intention, I'm starting this and uh, so the first question was my in my mind that uh, how to uh, how how to make sure that people can follow along with me right uh, you many of the people they are the windows user and i really don't want them to uh, invest uh, or purchase a linux machine just to learn an operating system right so the simplest way uh, i could figure out is the raspberry pis the smaller uh, uh, machines and I'll give you introduction in this video in introductory video will understand what is Raspberry Pi uh, what kind of Linux version they support and how to get started with that so we'll have a Raspberry Pi we'll upload the uh, operating system Linux operating system on it and SSH we should be able to SSH to it that's it and then from there we'll start our journey so let's get started coming back to uh, our page, uh, ZN Tech Forum, the topic is Kali Linux on Raspberry Pi. And what is Raspberry Pi? Raspberry Pi is a low cost credit uh, card size ARM computer. Yeah, but it's not that thin. Yes. Uh, despite being a good bit less powerful as a laptop PC, its affordability makes it an excellent option. So basically, Pi's are immensely uh powerful uh, uh, regardless of their size you can run a full-fledged operating system on that and uh, do uh, an operated like just a desktop right so how does it look generally it doesn't come with io and that means you need your uh, external input and output that mean a monitor keyboard mouse other than that uh, when you order a pi it comes prepackaged like this so let me play the this, this video and here you can see so this is my pi okay the, obviously this is a case plastic casing they provide you um, you can see this is the uh, sd card slot that's where this is a 16 32 gb uh, class 10 sd card uh, uh, because of faster processing purposes and this is there are the, uh, this is the power basically the usb kind of power hdmi port and then you have the audio port uh, all right on in this view now flip it you have rj45 network port and then three or four four actually four usb ports why four usb ports absolutely you need one for mouse one for uh, keyboard right and you can connect your monitor using hdmi when you open the casing this is how it looks right the chip and uh, they are marked that what chip serve what purposes so feel free to take a look inside that the casing make it very uh, durable and easy to handle right so if you buy it without casing maybe you may uh, damage uh, the board sometimes so it's better to buy it with casing and a lot of vendors they actually sell it with casing and now there are multiple options available like fan with fan cooling options and all so the pi i'm using is a bit old and i have given a link feel free to take a look but you don't really need to buy this go to amazon and uh, search yourself find a cheaper deal uh, and buy it for their purposes all right so 
I'm using Kanakit, the, the key, uh, and I'm quickly going to open it for you. So here you can go and order your Pi kit. Right now the version is going to four. Uh, I'm running this video in Pi three. That's why I said it's a bit old, but if you are buying a new one, you can buy a uh, Pi four. Also, uh, one key thing I want to uh, uh, bring in your notice that the power is actually the same USB-C kind of uh, charger uh, plug, power plug, but it's be always better to buy external uh, power supply uh, with the with this proper, uh, which can ensure that five volt DC and one ampere regulated power supply. So many of your phone uh, power uh, powers powers they cannot be consistent. So it's better to invest in this. Yeah. All right. Let's go back. So this is about the hardware, right? And now let's talk about our operating system what is kali linux right kali linux is again a debian based uh, version of linux and uh, uh, why kali because uh, it is security heavy right it has tons and tons of penetration tool this is one of the most uh, loved uh, operating system from security uh, professionals and i should have I, I may have started this video with ubuntu but i thought okay since this is like a uh, first level video where we will learn about operating system and the usability of operating system doesn't vary from a ubuntu or a kali linux so that's why uh, kali uh, will serve the purpose and since we started with kali we uh, i intend to show you some of the security hacks also going forward in the advanced videos right so that is why kali Things to note that when you run Kali on your Raspberry Pi, this is not a full-fledged image. So when you go to Kali.org, uh, uh, you will see that they have a ARM section, ARM images section. And that's from that you need to download your um, Raspberry Pi operating system. And this is not a full-fledged uh, desktop in installation. It has minimum tools. but that is absolutely fine. You really don't need to go and have a desktop level of in implementation. You can live with very well, if you are starting, you can very well live with this ARM image. Uh, it's reduced, that means it's lightweight, it takes um, less uh, memory and space. So this is a good one to start with. From where to download Kali? So Kali Linux documentation is vast, right? And it, uh, that's why I listed a couple of links here that from where you are going to download, from where, how you are going to make the bootable USB and all those things, right? Otherwise, you will, you may get lost. That's why I thought it's useful and that's the reason I put this uh, links here. So step one, download the software and boot with Kali Linux, right? So where you are going to do, uh, go and download, yeah, so this is the Kali introduction. Feel free to read more about it, okay? and. Uh, we are going to use the ARM image, which is for Raspberry Pi. So here you can come, Kali Linux ARM images. So I'm using 64-bit, 64-bit, uh, which is which can run on Pi 1, 2, or 3, and 4. So this is the image I'm going to use. But you can choose any other uh, based on what kind of Pi you're using, right? And uh, in this video, I'll refer Pi in a short form for Raspberry Pi. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, so once you download this, this is a 2.1 gig. Always make sure when you download something from internet, since we are in Kali class, always make sure that you match or validate the SHA sum, right? It's easy. You can validate it from uh, your uh, Linux or uh, uh, command terminal, SHA sum and the file name. It will uh, give you this uh, key value, match match them, and uh, make sure that what you downloaded is matching with what is posted here, right? Kali Linux security. All right, so uh, moving to the next, once you download uh, locally on your machine, you need to make it a bootable um, disk, right? So you, uh, you as you know that, you know, uh, Pi, we have the small chip, right? Micro SD. That's where you have to burn this image, right? And to burn that image, you can use the software, depend what operating system right now is your local machine is, is Windows or it's a Mac, 
right based on that you can use uh, uh, this page so this page actually talk about how to use with windows but the same software itcher or balena itcher uh, that can help you to uh, work it out in mac also so basically you this is a very simple thing you select your uh, image which you downloaded then select your disk and simply say flash it start flashing then it will do validation take will take almost 25 to 30 minute and then you are all set so your uh, usb uh, sorry your micro sd is now bootable all right insert it into the pi as shown in the video so let me play it again one more time for you yes sir so right here so this is your micro sd card make it usb bootable insert it back again continue okay now what do you have to do connect the external io that means connect monitor keyboard mouse to your pi slots and insert the card power it on now it will allow pi to boot okay on your external monitor you will start seeing the logs like that i have posted a screenshot okay that uh, started you will see the complete boot just like any operating system boots right our desktop laptop boots you will see all those things here uh, things to note is uh, in during the first time boot it boots in emergency mode and root uh, access is disabled right uh, also sss services are not disabled uh, are, are disabled uh, in this operating system this is not uh, not applicable to ubuntu or centos or any other debian based system this this is only for kali because it's a security heavy thing that's why they keep ssh disabled from the beginning so the thing to note is once you boot you are into emergency mode you need to put system ctl default uh, once you log in using your default username and password what is the default username and password that's listed here basically that is kali kali so you can use this uh, username and password you will go into the uh, uh, prompt section and then say system ctl uh, default from there on you can see uh, if you are use you have dscp enabled in your network you will see that uh, your uh, a uh, wired interface has already get an ip address so as you can see uh, eth0 in my video uh, mm, at my side has already got an uh, ip address so i have an ip address uh, i am connected using my uh, external ios and my operating system is up and running but that's not really convenient right i don't want to have a bulky um, uh, the keyboard a bulky monitor attached to this small powerful computer right yeah. uh, it it defeat the purpose it's a small right i want to like stack it uh, very close to my um, uh, networking closet so i want to obviously the uh, the best thing is to access it uh, remotely that's where we need ssh access and uh, now we are going to see what to uh, uh, what you are going to do to enable access access in kali linux okay so apt install open ssh server that is the newest version of uh, open ssh install that you may have to reconfigure open as, uh, ssh dp and uh, distribution package then enable enable is going to load the module start it will start the module and then you can check the status so you should see that ssh uh, daemon uh, is in active state all right once ssh service is active remove the default key so this pi actually comes with its own default uh, rsa uh, private public key pair and uh, this this is kind of like coming out of factory and uh, is known to other people and and susceptible it's a kind of vulnerability right if people who are familiar with uh what lot is shipping and all those things they may know the key so it's always better that doesn't rely on the default key and we will generate our own uh, rsa key pair so uh, before deleting the keys what you can do you can actually create a new directory and park uh, or move all the uh, uh, current keys 
to that uh, directory location this kind of backup and then what you are going to do you are going to uh, verify the checksum for that uh, I'll tell you why uh, now what do you want to do you want to create uh, your own keys right so just say uh, SSH key gen and it will create your own keys okay or you may use dpkg reconfigure reconfigure open ssh server and that will generate additional uh, or a new rsa key pair uh, which the system is going to use so the new newly generated key pair you are going to use actively the previously one will be backed up in a default kali keys later on if you want you can delete them all right now your ssh is enabled and you are ready to uh, uh, access it remotely the best practice is change the default username and password which is Kali and Kali upon first login. Yeah. Other thing as uh, kind of like bonus, your uh, Pi is accessible remotely, but again you are accessing using password. So if someone else knows the password, they can easily uh, get into it. So it's, uh, what we can do, we can enable passwordless authentication uh, using public uh, public authentic public key pair so what you have to do you have to copy your low your public key uh, the the remote workstation from where you want to access uh, the pi right so you have your own set of public private key pair copy the public key of your local or remote system and then upload that key to sshd uh, uh, authorize key so you have to create a new file called vi authorized key and paste your key here set the permissions so that it has read write permission for the user level all right and then under this shd config file you have to uncomment public key authentication to yes so you will see that it is commented you just have to go there and edit this file on un uncomment this uh, uh, this condition so next time when you try to log in or SSH to your Pi you will see that it's not asking for, for a password because it's send it's trying your keys first and how it works is that uh, uh, you uh, you send a SSH request encrypt, uh, encrypting it with your pri uh, private key and server has your public key so it uses that key to decrypt that and that's how the passwordless uh, SSH works, right? So I hope you can follow along the instructions. And um, I know there was a lot of things to gasp, but uh, uh, if you are new to uh, Pa, you are new to Kali, please follow along the instructions. And if you are stuck somewhere, feel free to comment in my uh, comment in uh, uh, section below, and uh, or maybe you, now you can use the website also, right? And I can help you to get started. Going forward, we'll learn about the Linux Unix operating system and then I'm going to show you the Linux or Unix hacks, which as a network engineer, you must know. So thank you very much for watching.